Modern physics is fundamentally flawed. The two theories that form its foundation contain errors which are limiting scientific progress. General relativity treats space and time as things that can bend. Now, space and time are not entities. They are relationships between entities. The concept of bending cannot apply to them. Quantum mechanics, on the other hand, is at best an abstract mathematical tool for making predictions, which lacks any physical meaning. Or at worst, it has an absurd physical meaning. It describes entities as being in multiple places at once, or as being particles and waves at the same time. Both theories are able to make correct predictions, but science is not just about predicting appearances. It is about identifying the underlying nature of things so that we can make further discoveries. For over 1,000 years, mankind's knowledge of astronomy stagnated while astronomers accepted a geocentric view of the solar system. Now, what most people don't realize is that this geocentric theory actually predicted the observed positions of the planets in the night sky by getting them to go around the Earth in this spiraling pattern. So long as this faulty planetary motion was accepted, the astronomers of that day could never have understood gravity, which left most of the physical world in the night sky closed to them. The faulty theories of quantum mechanics and relativity are accepted because physicists accept a faulty scientific method. In general, we look for new law by the following process. First, we guess it. <laughs> then we com well, don't laugh. That's the really true. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what, if this is right, if this law that we guessed is right, we see what it would imply. And then we compare those computation results to nature. So this is the hypothetical deductive method. And it's the scientific method that we were taught in school. You form a hypothesis, you do an experiment, and you see if the experiment agrees with your hypothesis. Now, this method leads to flawed theories because it doesn't actually prove anything. And the advocates of this scientific method are the first to admit this. Suppose that you invent a good guess, calculate the consequences, and discover that every consequence that you calculate agrees with the experiment. The theory is then right? No, it is simply not proved wrong. Because in the future, there could be a wider range of experiments, you could compute a wider range of, co of consequences, and you may discover then that the thing is wrong. Now, science does not have to proceed by this impotent method. It can arrive at conclusions which are understood with certainty using the inductive method. Instead of guessing and checking, it is possible to start with direct observations which can be known with certainty, and then use those observations to make bulletproof inferences which prove phenomena which cannot be directly perceived. Now, it turns out that the history of science already proceeded in this way, for much of the history of physics anyway, for the successful part. For example, around 1600, William Gilbert directly observed that some objects, which he called electric, could attract water, metal, or bits of paper. These were direct observations, which can be known with certainty. In the 1720s, Stephen Gray inferred that this electric property could move from one object to another. He couldn't actually see the electricity move, but he could see that an electric body could make another body electric when the two were connected with string. So he was able to infer that electricity could move through string. In 1820, Orsted observed that when electricity moved through a wire in this same way, it exerted a magnetic force, causing compasses to turn. And in 1864, by making deductions from these laws and other laws of electricity and magnetism, Maxwell discovered that vibrating charge would produce waves of electricity and magnetism. Waves which were later proven to be the same as light, since further experiments showed that they had all of the properties of light. 
Now note that this was not a series of lucky guesses which experiments have not yet proven wrong. This was a logical progression from direct observations like seeing electric attraction and inferences from those observations like those that proved electricity moves through string or other bodies. This kind of knowledge makes possible new observations, like Orsted seeing that electricity causes magnetism when it moves, which then leads to further inferences, like those of Maxwell discovering electromagnetic waves. The inductive physics project will identify this superior method and use it to reform our flawed understanding of quantum and relativistic phenomena. To this end, the inductive physics project will proceed in the following phases. Number one, teach and tutor college physics and math classes from an inductive perspective to fund the project, to develop expertise in the known principles, and to find promising young talent to join the project. Phase two, Give a series of lectures which present a rudimentary version of the observations and reasoning steps which prove the fundamentals of known physics leading up to quantum and relativistic phenomena. This phase is almost complete. The inductive summary of physics currently covers the basic inductions all the way from the astronomy of the ancient Greeks all the way to the discovery of the atomic nucleus. And you can find a link to those uh, lectures in the video description. Phase three, generalize on the methods of proof implicit in these observations and reasoning steps to write a working theory of induction, a new scientific method of observation and inference which is able to achieve certainty. I have already made videos on parts of this theory uh, and the theory as a whole will be finished in a book soon. So you can find links to the videos on parts of the theory in the description. Phase four, use that theory to give a rigorous proof of all of the basics of physics leading up to the discovery of quantum and relativistic phenomena. Because the true scientific method relies on troves of prior knowledge with which it is to make inferences about observations, it will only be able to make good inferences about the nature of quantum and relativistic phenomena if we first do a rigorous proof of all of the prior principles which were required to observe those phenomena. This will lead us to phase five, which is refining the theory of induction. During the process of reproving physics, I expect that there will be lots of opportunities to improve the theory, and so that is phase five. Phase six, form new theories of quantum and relativistic phenomena, which are proven with the theory of induction. A new theory of this kind will eliminate the misconceptions of the old theory and provide an understanding of these phenomena that we can actually be certain of. And once the road is cleared, we will proceed to phase seven. We will use this unprecedented understanding of existing physics to discover new physical phenomena. We have no idea what a real understanding of quantum and relativistic phenomena will make possible, and I intend to find out. Finally, phase eight of the plan is to use these new physical phenomena to develop, to develop new technologies to make a profit and to demonstrate to the world the power of the inductive method. So that is the plan of the inductive physics project. If you'd like to support the project, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash James Elias. And thank you very much to all my generous supporters who have contributed to the project so far. Now, if you'd like to support the project instead with your expertise, please email me at the email address on the screen. I am constantly looking for people who have knowledge of the history of physics or of branches of physics that I do not yet fully understand. So please email me and let me know how you would like to support the project. So I hope you will join me on this journey and together we will find out what induction, a true process of scientific proof, will make possible.